Welcome back! To get started, open up another blank project or follow along with the one we started last episode. I'm going to go over how to make squares, rectangles, and other simple shapes. We've went over how to make a canvas with the size command and how to make a circle. Let me tell you how to make a square. To use the square command, we type in square and then its x and y position. Let's say in the center of the canvas, we'd want it to be 200, 200. And then it needs one more value, and that's going to be the size of one of its sides. I'll do 60. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, so there's our square and our circle, but the square isn't in the center of the canvas, but its top left corner is in the center of the canvas. So the coordinates aren't for the center of the square, but its top left corner. And that side value shows how far the square extends. In this case, 60 pixels. Now what if I wanted a square that is longer on one side? Well, it wouldn't be a square then, it would be a rectangle. You can create rectangles with the rect command. The first two values are for its x and y position, and the next two values are for the x length and y length, the size of its width and height, respectively. If I wanted the rectangle to be wider than its height, I'd make the first value of the x length longer than the y length. So for its coordinates, let's say I did 100, 100, and its x length, let's say 300, and to make it wider, I'll make the y length shorter, so it's only 200 pixels tall. If we wanted the square to peek out, we could try something like this, making the rectangle shorter. Ah, now we can see part of the square, but it's still going off the screen, so let's shorten how long the x value is as well. Let's say about 40 pixels away from the end Now the rectangle is only covering the top half of the square and it's not going off the screen. This is the drawing order of processing. The things that are drawn on the screen last cover up the things that are drawn first. So if I wanted this rectangle to be behind the square, I would have to draw it before the square. So I'm going to copy it and paste it after the circle. So the square is the last thing. It should be the front most thing on my canvas. Now the square is in front of the rectangle. We can see it. You know, this canvas almost looks like a person. Let me show you what I mean. Let's make a stick figure from this with the line command. The line command takes four values, two for the starting point and two for the end point in x, y coordinates. If I wanted the line to start in the center of the square, I would add half the size of that square, which is 30, to both of the x, y coordinates. So if I want to be in the center, it would be 230, 230. And the second two values are for the ending point of that line. So if I want to go straight down, I would keep the x coordinate the same, but increase the y component. The canvas is 400 pixels tall. And if I wanted to stop at 40 pixels before it reached the end, I would subtract 40 from 400. So it stops at 360. Ah, now I can see the body. But I want the head to happen after the line, so I'm going to copy and paste the line and have it drawn before the square. Now it looks more like a person. Now let me add three more lines for the legs and arms. Ah, there we are. Two little legs and a line for both arms. Do you still not see it? Well, let's give it a face and maybe that will help. To add eyes, I'm going to add points on the square. To add a point, it's as simple as using the point command and using only two values for the x and y value. Ah, well, I can kind of see the points, but they're really, really small. I don't think it looks that great. Maybe we could use a circle instead. To do that, I'll change the command from points into circles. Now I have to say how wide the circles are. I'll create circles that are five pixels wide. Ah, that's much better. But I think there's still one thing missing from this fella, a mouth. 
I don't want the mouth to be a circle. I want it to be a semicircle. I'm not sure if I can indicate it with my cursor, but something like this. Luckily, there happens to be a command that can do just that. The arc command is a little complicated. It takes in six values, the center of the arc's coordinates, then the height and width of the arc itself. And finally, it needs the starting angle and the ending angle. If I wanted to start here and end here, I would start at zero and then go to pi. That's because processing works in radians for angle measurements. If you want to use degrees, you can by using the radian command. That will convert degrees to radians. Let's put the arc at 230, 230 in the center and make it a circle that is 30 wide and 30 tall and make the angle start at zero and then go to pi. Ah, that looks great. If you don't want to use radians, you can convert um, degrees into radians with the radians command. So 180. And make sure you close those parentheses. Ah, see, still looks great. Well, this is a nice little scene, but I think it looks a little bland, just white shapes on a gray background. So let's get into some color. If I wanted to change the background color, for example, I can use the background command to set the color to something different. Let's do this at the beginning of our project and set the background to be something like mm, zero. Oh, now we have our scene taking place during the night, but I wanted it to be more of a bright blue. Let's try a higher value, like 200. It's gray, but I wanted it to be blue. Only inputting one value into the background command assumes you're blending between white and black. So zero would be black and 255 would be white. Shine. To get to colors, we have to use RGB values. What I mean by RGB values is that we have to have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And, and the higher the number, the more you mix in. So if I want my color to be blue, I have to have a high blue value. My options are 0 to 255 for each of these channels. So if I want a lot of blue, I won't have any red or any green, just a lot of blue. Ah, there's that blue. But I want it to be lighter. If I lower it, that just makes it darker. Not what I want. That's because I'm getting closer to black, which is 0, 0, 0. The lower the number, the darker the color will be, and the higher the number, the brighter the color will be. I recommend using a color picker to find the color you want. You can find one off of Google by just going to color picker. Googling color picker takes you here, and here you can change the hue and find what shades works for you. So I'll start with a blue, but I need to make it brighter. So something like this. All right. So to get that color, all I need to do is copy the RGB values down here. And then I can add them, paste them into the background command. Ah, much better. I can also copy the hex value if that's easier. Notice that's just one number in hexadecimal, and the background command understands it just fine. Now let's color the rest of the stuff. I want that circle to be the sun, so it should be yellow. I can change the color of shapes with the fill command. Make sure you do it right before the shape. So I'll use fill right here, and, I'll, and I want a nice yellow. Nice bright yellow. Aw, uh, it also set the square and the rectangle and everything else to be yellow. That's because the fill stays the same for every shape you make after it. So I would set the fill back to white after the sun circle so everything looks back to normal. White is conveniently just 255. Ah, uh, much better. Why don't you try coloring the head and hair differently on your program? That's all I have for you today. 
Tune in next time as we start to talk about variables.